All right, back again, Luke here. And as you can see in front of you, today we have out another arcade PCB from Ken6275. This is a Konami double dribble PCB. And as you can see, it says it's broken. Overall, the look of this board is in really, really good condition. I mean, it looks fantastic, to be honest. I mean, aside from the scrapes and scratches on some of these top chips, the bottom is just, yeah, looks great. I mean, everything about this looks really good. So, I'm not sure what this is going to do here, or why it's broken, but let's uh, go ahead and flip this thing over here, and plug it in and check some of that. All right. Okay. And we are getting a watchdog reset going on here. Constant reset. And the CPU is working, but it's resetting, which can be, normally it can be uh, RAM related, or it could be uh, a cut of some sort. These are a couple of very close to the edge RAM chips, but those are also Fujitsu ones, which are pretty good, usually don't go bad. But, yeah, we're going to have to take a look at this. Could be a number of things. Could be the CPU, could be the RAM, which could be bad, or other. <laughs> so, this is one thing we're going to have to take a look at and go from there. But, it's at least showing something. It's just showing garbage. So, let's try and figure out why this circuit is watchdogging. Okay, so what I did is I tried to clean up these uh, socketed ROMs, mask ROMs, and EPROMs, and I tried to switch over the two CPUs since they are the same here, and I figured we could give it a shot again, see what it does. And it's still doing the same thing. Now, one interesting thing about these Konami boards is you'll know that um, on this one, there's one point that says JP. This is something that if you close it, you can stop the system from watchdogging and it'll actually kind of freeze still. This can help you to probe and find out what's going on with the CPU and the CPU lines. Uh, we're not going to bridge it um, with solder, but if we touch it, let's see, I'll keep it held there. You can see that it actually stops the CPU from watchdogging. If we let go, we'll start back up again. And we can stop it here. You can see uh, some graphics there. Looks like it's trying to fire up. So we need to find out what's going on in the circuit here that's causing it to continuously watchdog. It's going to keep doing this here. So, uh, I did realize that this board, as well as most uh, all Konami boards, are just littered with these Fujitsu TTL chips. Now, the Fujitsu RAM is usually pretty good, but the TTLs, man, those things are, you know, you're better off just removing them in the first place and putting something else in there because they are bound to fail no matter what. They were just really poorly built. Um, and. Nowadays, they just, yeah, they're the, the biggest failure point for most of these arcade PCBs. The problem is, is there are so many on them. It's like, which one is it? <laughs> but, yeah, these are a couple of things. It looks like we've got a couple of, these ones may be RAM chips. One, two, three, four. Here, there's five, six, uh, seven, eight, at least eight. Eight RAM chips on here, so I want to see what we can do and find out about uh, the RAM. See if there's anything going on with the RAM parts, and then go from there. All right, so just to show you guys what I've been doing here, I've taken out this Konami 007327 off camera, and this is responsible for the RGB as well as the rest of the video circuit. It's a custom chip, and it does have a couple of RAM chips underneath it, but if this ever goes bad, it can cause some problems with the board not booting or not showing graphics, things like that. So I wanted to make sure that that was working properly. So I desoldered that. I put that in one of my other Konami boards and tested it out, and it is working 
working fine. So with this in a socket now, I can remove that or I can you know, put it back in if I need. But since it's working fine, we really won't have to deal with that. The other thing that I'm trying to do here is figure out what's going on with the board and see what's working, what's not. Uh, there are a lot of points on here that could be faulty and going over each one of them is gonna take some time. Because the board is in such good shape, there aren't any uh, cut traces, there's nothing. It's, it's really in good condition here, so. Fixing this one's a bit more tricky. If we take a look at the power, when it powers on, you can see that it's just doing its watchdog reset, right? And I think I showed this once before here. But if we take some, let's turn this off here. If we take some solder and we run this over on the jumper, JP point, you can usually find a jumper point on most Konami boards. They're somewhere, they're not always over here. Sometimes they're up front and uh, sometimes in the middle, but we just jump that there. And after doing so, you can see this will want to boot. It's pretty much getting ready to, to go through its um, self-test and whatnot, but it's not doing any self-test right now. So all it does is just sit there and it's going to continually sit there what we've done is we've actively disabled the watchdog so it'll stop barking basically stop moving and it'll give us a chance to probe some of these other ic's and see what's going on with them now the thing about this is it's trying to go and backtrack these which one is connected to which line or which part which ic is the uh, faulty one there are so many fujitsu chips on here that could be bad and uh, the Motorola ones can also be bad as well. I mean, th these are two common chips that usually go go out. But uh, taking a look here, we've got a uh, an AND gate, and this is a 74LS08. And if we turn this off here, um, you know, explaining these ones on cameras can be uh, and camera can be a bit tricky. But if we take a look here, and we look at our first pin. This one is pulsing and it is low. We take a look at the second one, it is also low. So the third one has to be low. Um, with this particular gate, it's made up of one, two, three, four gates on it. And the way that it works is that uh, pin X and Y, if pin X is uh, the same as Y, then Z has to be the same. Uh, the only thing where it changes is if it's, uh, what is it, if it's low all the time, it will stay low. For example, let me see if I can find one here. Um, okay, we've got, oh, this probe is going to be a bit tricky. I believe that's high. That's high, so this has to be high here. And this one's not going to be used. Uh, and the next one here, this is our 5 volts. Then we're going to go... This is high, this one is high, and this one has to be high. Uh, the next one, we've got high and low. So if we have high and low, unless both of these are the same, this will have to be low for the last one. Yes, and it is. So as you can see here, the uh, 74LS08 is working fine. Uh, some of the other ones that to take a look at here, we've got an LSO4, and this one is an inverter. So if we take a look at the first one here, this one is, oh, it's hard to see here. It looks like active high. So this one should be low. Yes, it is. And this one is not connected. So the next one should be low. Yes. This one is low. So the next one should be high. Uh, that's a bit interesting. That That is low, isn't it? That's low. Is that also low? That could be an issue right there. I mean, it's hard to tell. This is, I mean, this is one of those points where, you know, definitely having a, a oscilloscope can be beneficial for this. Hmm. Let's see, on the other side here. This one is high. Oh, whoops, I think it's a VCS. This one is, so that one's high. This one's low. This one's high. This one's low. This one is, I suppose it's low. Is it, it's hard to tell. 
Hmm. This LSO4 looks a bit iffy. I mean, it could be that or else it could be my uh, probe here. But that may be one place to start. Maybe start with the LSO4 and see if that changes anything. I'm not sure if it's going to or not. But it does seem a bit iffy. And those gates on the inside there, they should be, you know, connected and they shouldn't have any sort of, um, you know, variables in between. If it's high, it should be low. And if it's low, it should be high. I mean, it shouldn't be high, high or low, low. That doesn't work for this chip. <clears throat> so what I might do is I might remove this 74 LSO4 and test and see if we can put another one in there and see if that changes anything. The LSO8 looks like it's doing what it should. I mean, there's still a lot more to go around here and check, but those two look like they're possibly okay. And our OR gates we've got. Um, yeah, so let me go ahead and maybe take out the 74 LSO4 and see what happens, see if we can get something better. So I'll be back here in a little bit. Okay, so as you can see here, I've desoldered this uh, 74 LSO4 and I've put in a socket in a new one here. I figured we could give this a shot and see if this changes anything. I've also removed the jumper over here just, uh, just in case, but we'll give this a shot. Let's see if we get anything new. Nope, that wasn't it. Uh, it's tricky. Sometimes you, you're not able to guess right on these, and uh, yeah, these things happen, I suppose. But still, okay, so the 74LSO4 was not the problem. We still have a few other ones that we can check here uh, in this circuit. Uh, the LS253s uh, have a tendency of going bad, and we can also check the LS. Do, 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 do. What else can we check? Yeah, that 08. I mean, even though the 08 seemed like it was okay, I don't know if I'm. Yeah, if I want to take it out and just try a new one anyway. But, hmm. Okay. I'm going to try a couple of things here. Hopefully try not to remove everything. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll see what else we can do here. And we'll get back and uh, I'll see you in a few minutes. Alrighty, so as I was going over the board here, there was a huge oversight on my part and uh, something that I can't believe I missed. But when I went over this board and I took out the ROMs to check them, I made sure that everything was okay and the ROMs were read all right and everything came back fine. There were no problems checking it against the ROMs in MAME. But one thing I did realize here <laughs> when I went to uh, check to see what I was um, missing as far as like the sprites and like why this thing was going into reset. I removed this chip here, but you may notice that this is not the chip that was there. It's this one. So somehow, probably before I even started working on this board, this uh, EEPROM was actually here and this EEPROM was here. So they were actually swapped and I didn't really realize it until I removed this one to try and see if I could figure out what was going on and the the uh, board itself started to show signs of booting or wanting to boot. So I instantly thought like, okay, is this ROM really good or is it bad? And I read it again when I went and tried to check it in MAME and I tried to see what it was listed under as far as like the location, it didn't match. It was over here and this one was over here. And I thought, oh my gosh, is it that simple? And sure enough, swapping these two over got this to start up again. Now there was another problem here and uh, the other problem is that the system is experiencing a bit of some bugs. So I decided to take out the uh, the RAM on the sides here. I'll show you what's going on right now. That's what it does now and it'll come up with the window or it looks like a window <laughs> and everything here works fine especially in uh, demo mode it looks good but then the character sprites have a tendency to look like uh, blocks at some times. I've been trying to mess around with these RAM chips and swapping those out to see which one they possibly could be. This looks fine. It's just the in-game that looks a bit iffy. 
see if we can see some of it going on. Uh, normally, it's right there, you guys can see we've got the kind of square spots above the sprites there. And I'm still trying to work on that to figure out what that is, but uh, I did notice too that one of these Konami chips, this one was actually sitting on the end here. I swapped these ones out and they're the exact same. So either way you do it, it still has the same effect. But you can see the uh, kind of scratch marks here. There was no other damage to the board, so I'm not really sure there. But I'm guessing it's probably one of these uh, RAM chips that's not functioning perfectly. It probably has one bad uh, output on it and that's causing this to kind of act a little bit funky so I'm gonna see if I can find that and if I can find that and fix that I think this board will be a okay so I'm gonna get on that and I'll see you guys here in a few minutes okay so as you can see here I have removed the old Fujitsu chips here or RAM chips and I've got both of those and then I've added two new ones on the side here so let's go ahead and flip the switch and see how it goes give this a shot See it doing its boot thing. And it's going to take a couple seconds for it just to go through demo mode. Actually, no, let's just start it up. Do we want to see demo mode? No, let's start it up. <laughs> uh, whoops, start. That is really bad singing, isn't it? <laughs> you can see the flag kind of coming up in the background. Let's kind of skip that. <laughs> as awesome as it is. But as you can see here, the uh, graphics are all back. But I don't have any controls, so... Nevertheless, we have another board here that is back from the dead. Good old uh, Konami double dribble. And uh, yeah, just a couple of things where I feel like, uh, you know, I should have caught earlier. One of them being, yeah, definitely these two chips here. Um, these two EPROMs being backwards, but yeah, I mean, you live and learn and that's one of those things. So if you ever come across one of these boards here, Good idea to check in uh, MAME, make sure that the locations are right, and even better than that, just check a picture online, <laughs> and you should be all set. But nevertheless, just want to share with you guys a bit of a look at this repair here, and yeah, that's about all for me for right now. Like always, I'll put up another video here soon, so thanks for watching. Watching the computer play. <laughs> So cool. Reminds me of uh, Jailbreak, Konami's Jailbreak. I think they use the exact same voice. They use the same kind of style too. But yeah, good to have another board here up and running. <laughs> well, we're just going to leave that right there, and we are going to take this off because it is no longer broken. It's in good working condition. So, thanks again, guys, and we'll get some more repairs up here quite soon.